it's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. It certainly is, Grace. Thank you very much. Here we are with Chapter 6, Lesson 6, Increasing and Decreasing Functions. Now, I could give you a function, f of x equals something in terms of x, or y equals something in terms of x, and you could very merrily graph that function. If you do, what you may find is that there are sections of the graph that slope down from left to right. And if there are, what you would say is that the function is decreasing for that section. You may also find there are sections where the graph is sloping up from left to right. And if there are, for that section, the function would be increasing. Now, what's the whole point in differentiation? It is to find out the gradient of a curve at a certain point. So remember, dy by dx, the derivative, or f dash x, is really equal to the gradient. So, if you find that dy by dx is bigger than zero, you would know that the curve is increasing as the gradient will be positive. And if you get dy by dx to be less than zero, the curve would be decreasing as the gradient will be a negative. Think back to the straight line chapter. Remember the gra positive gradient means the line slopes up from left to right. A negative gradient means it slopes down. You can apply that here to curves. For example, with this curve here, you can see for this first section, it's sloping up from left to right. So the derivative must be bigger than zero. If you take some x values then, let's say we draw a line down here. If you take whatever x value that is and uh, sub it into the derivative, you'll get a positive number because it's a positive gradient. Or here, if you take whatever x value that is and you sub it into the derivative, it'll be a positive number. However, with this section, if you take this x value here and sub it into the derivative, you'll get a negative number because the line is sloping down, so it's a negative gradient. And when you reach this point down here, you start to get a positive gradient again. So, let's try some examples with that. Example number one. Is y equals x squared minus 5x increasing or decreasing when x equals 4? So is the graph sloping up? Is it sloping down? Is the gradient positive or is the gradient negative? This is what it's asking you. So we're going to start off with y equals x squared minus 5x. Remember to find out if it's increasing or decreasing, we use the derivative. So to differentiate that, well, we can do that straight away. So dy by dx equals 2x minus 5. So that's the derivative. But how do we know if it's increasing or decreasing when x is 4? That's right, we can sub it in. So when x equals 4, dy by dx would be equal to 2 times 4, take away 5, which will give you 8, take away 5, which is 3. And because we get a positive number, remember dy by dx is really your gradient, so you can say that the function is increasing at x equals 4, since the derivative, dy by dx, is bigger than 0. So the gradient's bigger than 0, so it's increasing. Example number 2. Find the interval for which the function y equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 5 is increasing. So for this one, we're not looking for a certain value that is going to be increasing, or not asked for a certain value, is it increasing or is it decreasing? We want to know an interval. So it might be increasing when x is between 5 and 10, or maybe it's when x is between negative 13 and 27. Who knows? To do this, again, take your function, y equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 5, and the key to finding out if it's increasing or decreasing is finding the derivative. So if you differentiate that, you would get dy by dx equals 2 times 3 is 6. That would decrease the power to 1, so 6x plus 2, and that's the derivative. You know, though, that for a function to be increasing, the derivative must be bigger than 0, because it's going to be a positive number. It'll be a positive gradient, so it's increasing. So you will say that the function is increasing when dy by dx is bigger than zero. What you have to do then is you would take dy by dx, the 6x add 2, and set it to be bigger than zero. So 6x plus 2 must be bigger than zero. If you solve that for x, subtract 2 from both sides, 
divide by 6, you'd end up with negative 2 sixths. 2 sixths so would just become 1 third. And don't forget the negative. So x would be bigger than negative 1 third. What you'll say then is that the function is increasing when x is bigger than negative 1 third. So that is going to be the interval. Okay, so for any value bigger than negative 1 third, you will always get a positive when you sub it into the derivative, so the function will be increasing when x is bigger than negative 1 third. Example number 3. Show that this function, f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 10, is never, ever, ever, ever decreasing. So the solution for this one, we're starting off with f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared at 3x minus 10. How do we show it's never decreasing? Well, if it's never decreasing, the derivative must always be positive, or maybe even zero, but it's never going to be a negative. So let's start off working out the derivative. So if you differentiate this, you'll end up with f dash x equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 3. So how do we show that's always going to be positive or zero? Well, what you could always do, we've got something x squared, something x, and then a number. So you could factorise that. You could take out 3 as a common factor. So we've got 3 bracket x squared minus 2x plus 1. What could you do after that? Well, you could factorise again. Factorise x squared minus 2x plus 1, and you get 3 bracket x minus 1 squared. x squared take 2x plus 1 is just x take 1 all squared. Think about this then. You're asked to show that the function is never decreasing, which means you're never going to get a negative for this. And that's going to be true because x minus 1 all squared, whenever you square a number, try it just now, pick any number you like. If you square it, you will always get something positive or 0. So you can say that for all values of x, x minus 1 all squared is always going to be bigger than or equal to 0. So there's no way you can get a negative for that. And if you times it by 3, you're still not going to get a negative. So therefore, 3 bracket x minus 1 all squared is bigger than or equal to 0 for all values of x. So since the derivative is always bigger than 0, f of x is never decreasing. One last example. Number 4. Find the intervals this time in which the function f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 8 is increasing and decreasing. This example here is going to come up again in quadratics. It's definitely one of the harder examples. And if there's anything you're not sure of, you may wish to look ahead or wait for the quadratics chapter. But I wanted to throw in a harder example here. So, again, we're asked, is it increasing or decreasing? Finding the interval so you know the key is the derivative. So differentiate that, and we get f dash x equals 3x squared minus 6x. So you can say that the function is going to be increasing when 3x squared minus 6x is bigger than 0. And you could also say that it's going to be decreasing when the derivative is less than 0. So it's decreasing when that is less than 0. But how do you find the values for that? This isn't as straightforward as factorise and then set it bigger than zero or less than zero. What you've got to do to solve this is you have to imagine it is set equal to zero and you would graph it. So you set 3x squared minus 6x equal to zero and graph it. So 3x squared minus 6x equals zero. You know to solve that, you would factorise, so take out 3x as a common factor. If you solve that to get the values of x, 3x is equal to 0, or x minus 2 equals 0, giving you x is 0, or 2. So if you graphed that, you know the two points that it would cross the x-axis would be 0 and 2. Because x squared is a positive, you know your quadratic is going to look like that. It's a smiley face. Or you could always pick 1 and then sub it in here. You will get a negative, so it means your graph looks something like this. This isn't a graph, though, with x and y. This is the derivative that we are graphing. So what you can say is that 3x squared minus xx is bigger than 0 when x is less than 0 or when x is bigger than 2. Again, remember this is a derivative that we are looking at, so 
the derivative here in your y-axis is bigger than zero, so it's above the x-axis here at this point and at this point, and that's when x is bigger than two, and that's when x is less than zero, as we've got here. You can also say that it's less than zero when it's below the x-axis, and it's below the x-axis for obviously this bit, when x is between zero and two. Again, this is a harder example. It'll make more sense once we've done quadratics, or if you look ahead to see quadratics. But you would then say that f of x is increasing when x is less than 0, or when x is bigger than 2, and it's decreasing when x is between 0 and 2. Remember, this is a derivative that we are graphing here. It is a harder example. Try some of the questions in the book. It is the Heinemann Higher, page 104, exercise 6L, increasing and decreasing functions. The key is really get the derivative. Good luck. Have fun.